Next question is from Frines Tamamos. How can you tell the difference between hip and foot instability? That's a good question. You know what's funny about foot and hip instability? They usually go along together. I was going to say. Yeah, it's pretty rare you'll find one and not an issue with the other. I mean, if you're, if whichever one has the problem, the other one starts to compensate. So in my experience, uh, I'd say probably nine out of 10 times, if you see instability in the foot, there's going to be some issues with the hip um, and vice versa. Although it's usually the foot that leads to the hip and not the other way around. I, I didn't believe this before. This isn't something that I used to think before until years ago we put together Maps Prime Pro with our friend uh, Dr. Justin Brink. And when he highlighted just the instability of my own ankle and foot, and I said, oh my gosh, this is totally true. And the fact that we wear shoes as soon as we can walk and our, foos, our shoes excuse me, stabilize everything for us and how weak our feet and ankles uh, tend to become, um, I really realized that that's probably the root of a lot of people's uh, hip instability. Well, and this is, mm-hmm. uh, again, a shameless plug on the Prime Pro program, but this is why we created this. Is it's uh, It's got seven of the major joints, uh, and there's a test that comes with it. And so the idea is that you go through each one of those tests and uh, test your range of motion and stability in that joint. And if you fail, um, there that's an area that you should be working on. And I would, w- I'm would, i willing to bet that if you fail the ankle foot one, you're probably going to fail the hip one or there's going to be work to be done on, on both. So uh, but that was the motivation behind that was this is very, very common and there there is ways to test it and see and, you know, test them both out and, and see what you find out. But like Sal's alluding to, it's I think almost every time I've seen an issue in somebody's foot, there's also work to be done in the hips. But uh, go through Prime Pro. And if you if you don't have Prime Pro and you're wanting to know what I'm talking about, I mean, Justin did a great or excuse me, I did the Prime Pro webinar. Justin did the Prime one. I uh, did one on uh, primeprowebinar.com. It's totally free. Uh, and, and I go through most of the joints. I don't go through all of them, but I go through most of them, giving you an idea uh, of what you're working on and what it would look like, uh, especially for the hips that's in there. Mm. Uh, check that out. Now, side note, uh, if you find that you have instability issues and you want to work on them, take your time. It's a slow process. Don't do anything super intense because the harder you go, the more likely you are to revert back to your bad movement pattern. So start slow and practice very often and frequently. You don't necessarily need to do long stability workouts. 15, 20 minutes every single day will get your body to start to progress. Um, But once you start to progress, pace yourself because it's, you know, I've done this to myself where I start to notice more stability and then I immediately want to go up and wait with Mm -hmm. my lifts uh, because now I can lift more and then, oh, I hurt myself, you know, type of deal. So take your time um, uh, but once you get to the point where they start to feel stable, it's pretty awesome. You start to notice just how much stronger you are when you have stability in those areas. 